Hello, welcome to another video of Code Snippet. In this video, we are going to look into how we can connect our Spring Boot application to a database which is running inside AWS RDS. So in the last video, we have seen what exactly is AWS RDS. We have created a MySQL database and we have connected to it successfully. But in this video, we are going to see how we can connect to AWS RDS from your Spring Boot applications. Now let's get started without wasting any time. This is going to be a fun video. So sit back, relax and enjoy the show. Alright, so let's quickly jump into the agenda of this particular video. Pretty simple agenda. So basically Spring Boot plus AWS RDS. Now first of all, we are going to see how do we connect to our locally running MySQL database from your Spring Boot application. And after that, we will just simply switch to AWS RDS in the same configuration. So this is basically pretty simple stuff that we are going to look into this video. So what we will do if I go to Canvas, then let's say you have a Spring Boot application running at your local. Now what you can do, you can easily install MySQL in your local. If you're using Mac, you can just say brew install MySQL. If you are using Windows, you can just download exe file and install it. And this particular Spring Boot application, you can easily connect to your MySQL database by using JDBC, right? So Java database connection. Well, Spring Boot application internally uses JDBC. So you don't have to do much over here. We are going to make use of JPA that is Java Persistence API. If you don't know what exactly is JPA, you can go ahead and check out my playlist on Spring Boot. I have covered everything over there. So here we have a Spring Initializer and here I have created a simple project Spring RDS Demo, right? And here we have added Spring Web, Spring Data JPA and MySQL driver as a dependency. After that, I have just downloaded this project and I have opened it in my IntelliJ. So let me just go ahead and pull it over here. So there we go. So this is basically the project and here I have added bare minimum things, right? So only three, four classes I have added over here. I will just walk you through it quickly. So here, if you see, I have a simple controller saying product controller here. I have a save method, which should just get this product and it will just call a repository. So I have this particular product repository, which I have created over here. So this is basically product repository, which is basically making use of JPA repository and it will try to store this particular product. So this is basically the entity where we have ID, name and price. That's it. And once we hit this particular API, this product should be saved inside a database. But where is the database connection? So if I go to this pom.xml, then you will see all the dependencies that we have seen. So if you see over here, we have this starter web that should be fine. After that, we have this MySQL connector. And after that, I have this Spring Boot starter data JPA as well. So this would allow us to make use of this JPA repository, right? This JPA repository. So JPA also we have seen in the Spring Boot playlist. So if you are not aware of it, I will recommend you go ahead and check it out. You will have fun. Now, the major thing over here is now we have seen the code, but how the Spring Boot application actually connects to database. We need to provide the database URL and stuff over here, right? Now, where do we provide that? Now here, if you see, you will see some configuration in application.properties. Here we have application name. Here we have the data source URL. So JDBC URL for local MySQL setup. So what I have given, I have just given localhost colon 3306. It's a default port of your MySQL. And here I'm giving test DB. Here I'm disabling SSL since it is a local connection. And server time zone, I'm just giving UTC. You don't really need to give these two. After that, what you need is you need a username of your data source. That is the username of your MySQL and the password of your MySQL. So my username is let's say root and password is basically nothing because I did not add any. After that, we have this particular configuration related to JPA and Hibernate. Spring.jpa.hibernate.ddl auto. Now, when I give it as update, it means that it will automatically create tables based on our entities. So here we have product entity, right? So based on this entity, it should create a table for us. After that, we have jpa.showsql true. That means we will be able to visualize the query at the console. After that, we have Hibernate dialect. It will tell Hibernate to generate queries which are compatible with MySQL 8. This is basically the simple configuration. Main thing over here is this and this right. Now what I will do, let me go and bring up my terminal over here. Let me just pull it over here. Let me maximize it and let me zoom it a bit so that it's clearly visible. There we go. I hope it is visible now. And here I will just hit the command to start my MySQL. So I will just say MySQL hyphen u root to start it as a u root user. So for MySQL is just started. Now what I will do, I will just say show databases. So if you see over here, I have this particular test DB. So what I can do, I can just go inside test DB. So let me just say use 
test db over here and we are in the database basically now if i go ahead and i try to start this application then if you see over here the application come up just fine right so application is running on 8080 no problems now if i go ahead and say show tables then you will see that we have this product table over here and if i say select star from product then you will say empty set that means there is nothing inside this product because it is just created right now what we will do let me just hit our apis in from our controller so we have this slash product and we need to pass this product over here so what i will do i'll just go ahead and bring my postman over here there we go and here i will just say localhost 8080 slash product and here we need to pass body as this particular product which contains name and price now what we will do we'll just go ahead over here and let me just give this as a body i'll go to raw i'll say json object and let me just paste this over here this is basically my product and what i will do i believe this is a post api and i will just hit it so we are getting 200 okay right what i will do i will just hit this particular command again select star from product and guess what we are getting id as one name as null price as null now i wonder why it is coming as null well i believe that is because we don't have getter setters over here so what i will do i will just go ahead and create getter setters for all of them and i will just quickly rerun my application and now let's see what happens now i will just go back and i will just say send there we go so we are getting the response as well this time so i believe it should be there so there we go so our product is added in the database so no problem basically if we hit our other api what is our other api to get the products let me go back to controller it is get mapping products right and now if i hit this then we are getting these two products first one is basically null and second is our macbook pro so no problem over here so we are able to connect to local database just fine right so it's a simple configuration that we are doing over here and if you see over here we are getting this particular queries so insert into product and everything right so this we are getting because we have enabled this particular configuration over here that is why we see this particular queries from hibernate right so that is how we can see that so now if i go back and if i go back over here then we have a spring boot application and we are able to connect to mysql which is running in our local now this particular mysql is running on my mac so it is running on my mac so it is running on my local machine this mysql is not the part of this particular application right so there is this spring boot application and there is this mysql and they are connected by using jdbc so this particular application is connecting to this particular mysql so for this particular application this mysql is some other service which is running outside of your application right which is a which is basically a database running outside of your application and this particular spring boot application is connecting to it by using jdbc now similar to this we will have mysql running in some other server which we call as rds and which is going to be running inside your aws environment now this rds is going to be running inside your aws environment so this will just be running inside your aws and similar to this local connection you just need to configure this application to connect to aws aws rds how simple is that so let's go ahead on our aws console so this is basically our aws console i have logged in by using my root user as usual here what i will do i'll just go to aurora or rds aurora and rds basically let it load and here i will just quickly go ahead and create a database instance so i'll just again select standard create i will select my sql i just keep everything same after that i will select a free tier account i'll just keep the same database instance identifier master username i'll keep admin here i will just give a simple password let's say admin one two three four and here also i will just add admin one two three four no problem right after that we will just keep everything else as same so all this configuration we have already looked into in the last video so if you haven't seen that video i will recommend you go ahead and check it out after that what i will do here i will just select public access as true here we need to create a new firewall so i will just say db firewall 
and I will keep everything else as same and what I will do I will just say create create database now it will just start creating a database for me right so it will just take a while to create a database as you can see it is saying creating database database one for us now here if you see our database is basically available so if you see over here the status is available if I go inside it you will see the same details now we don't have any connection and here if you see the endpoint from where we can connect to this particular database now what I will do I will just copy this and I will pull this particular notepad over here where I have pasted it so this is basically the command where by using which we can connect to that particular database from our local basically right so here what I will do I will just go here here I will just say quit so this local database that we were uh, connected to is basically disconnected now I will just clear this and here I will just paste this link I will say enter it is asking for password so I believe we have added admin 1234 and there we go so we have connected to the database from our AWS right now now here if I say show databases then here you will see that we don't have any test DB or we don't have any database basically so let me just zoom it a bit so that it's clearly visible and here what we can do now we can just go ahead and say create database and we'll name it as let's say inventory so basically inventory database we will create and again if I say show databases then you will see our inventory database is created now what I will do I will just say use inventory now use inventory and now we are inside a database now if I say show tables then you will see that we don't have any tables basically because we are yet to connect to this particular database now what I will do now what we have done we have created a database so if I go back over here to our canvas so this particular database we have created so this RDS is now running my SQL now what we will do let me go back to our configuration and instead of this particular URL so what I will do I will just remove this URL or what I will do I will just comment it out I'll just say hash and I will just copy and paste a new one and let me just remove this particular URL and here instead of this one what I will do I will just go ahead and paste this URL which we have copied from where this particular database this endpoint we will just copy and we will paste it over here so I have added it and if you remember our username was admin and our password was admin 1234 and rest of the configuration I will just keep same and now let's try to restart our application and guess what it failed it failed because we are giving some kind of wrong URL and what is the problem you see a problem over here we did not add a database so here we had a test db right where is db over here we did not add so i'll just say inventory also apart from that we need a double slash over here as well double slash database url and inventory right so now the url look just fine now let me try to bring it again now if you see our application is coming up and it came up just fine now let me go back over here and now let's say show tables now if you see we have product table over here and there might be a hibernate query over here which is trying to create a product so this is basically create table product with this parameter right so this is basically our friend hibernate is creating this particular table because we have asked it to do so in here this particular configuration will do it automatically for us so now we have this product created in a AWS environment that means we are successfully created to this particular AWS RDS MySQL database right just fine now we will go and let's try to hit this particular API again let me try to post this particular same data and we got something and now what I will do I'll just go ahead and say select star product so select star from product and if you see over here we have one product just fine and here if I go and try to fetch all the products then you will see the same product is coming back but now it is not a local DB rather it is your RDS AWS RDS running in your AWS so what we did we have connected to local MySQL and in the same way we connected to RDS AWS RDS how simple is that 
it is not a big thing it is just your different database running and you can connect to that database however you want i am trying to connect it by using this particular terminal as well as my spring boot application this particular spring boot application which is running in my local now if i go back over here and let me try to refresh this then you will see that there are a lot of connections basically to this particular database right because my spring boot application is trying to make a lot of connection with this particular database and doing some operations that's why we are seeing a lot of connections basically and that is how you can simply connect to your aws rds now it doesn't matter where your application is running your spring boot application may be running your locally maybe it running in a ecs instance so if you zip this particular application and put it in ecs instance still it will be able to connect to aws rds because we are connecting by using a public api so this is basically a public endpoint that we are using to connect to aws so no matter where your spring boot application is running it will be able to connect to your aws rds instance it is just simple stuff so very very simple stuff we have seen we have seen how to connect to local mysql after that we have created a rds instance and we have created a mysql database inside it and we have seen how to connect to rds db as well it is just by playing with your configuration like this nothing much right very very simple stuff it is very basic stuff very simple stuff that we have seen this is basically the base of what we are going to build in the upcoming videos so this is basically how we connect to database so first we are learning basics after that we will build a lot of industry level things right so that is something which we are going to do in our near future so that's basically it in this particular simple video so we have seen how we can connect our spring boot application to your mysql database running in aws rds that's it for this video if you like the video hit the like button don't forget to subscribe to code snippet your little effort of subscribing will give me a lot of motivation to create more such videos Share this video with your friends so that they also have idea about how to connect your Spring Boot application to AWS IDS. That's it for this video. See you in the next video.